In the melodic minor scale, what we're thinking about here is we use this more for melodies than we do for building harmonies. Building harmonies with the melodic minor scale causes some even weirder problems than like that augmented chord that we just saw. So we mostly pull from the melodic minor scale to make a melody that flows a little bit better uh, and really emphasizes the leading tone, the dominant five chord, and the tonic. So what we do is we raise the leading tone. So it, just like the harmonic minor, it has a leading tone, but the melodic minor also has a raised sixth. Now what does that do for us? What it kind of does is it keeps, you can kind of think of it like the first half of it is minor and the second half of it is major. That's kind of what it is. The reason that we we would do this is that this leading this leading tone pushes to tonic a whole bunch, but this gets rid of that big weird gap, that, that minor third interval. So remember, if this is just natural, what we have is this minor third gap here, and it gives us that kind of Phantom of the Opera sound, I called it. So let's, by raising the sixth, we get rid of that, that interval, and it sounds a bit more smooth because the interval here is a whole step because it was a half step. So all we did was raise it to a whole step. We didn't raise it to a minor third, which would be a big raise. So this kind of smooths out that big gap. Let's hear it. So you don't get that big gap this way. Now there's another little trick to the melodic minor scale that is just even weirder. Let me write this going down. So I'm gonna go down the A minor scale. I'm just gonna write a natural minor scale. Oops. Okay. Now here's what's weird about the melodic minor scale. When we use the melodic minor scale, typically we raise the sixth and seventh when we're going up, when we're ascending. When we're descending and having the scale go down, we keep those suckers natural. And we do them as the natural minor scale going down. Typically only raise the six and seven when we're in an ascending line. A melody that goes up. If we're not going up, we do them as natural. It's so weird, right? It's just the weirdest thing. Like, why does the direction of the scale matter to um, what notes are in it? It's like quantum theory in a way. Um, but it does. Uh, because these leading tone properties leading to this A don't have the same effect when we're going down. We want them to still feel like a minor scale, right? When we go up, we use these raised notes to push us to here. When we're going down, we don't need a push to here. These notes push us down to tonic just fine on their own. So let's hear the whole thing going up and down. Okay, so in a melody, you might have a section of music where there's a little run up to tonic and you would raise these. And you would, if you're going down in some pattern, you would not raise them. And it's not about using the whole scale. It, you know, when we write melodies, it goes all over the place. So um, you don't need to write the whole scale in order to get this raised and these not raised. If you're doing some melody that starts on E and goes up to A, you might raise them. And if it's going down to F, for example, you might not raise them. But it's a choice. You don't have to do that. It doesn't mean your melodies that you write have to use the melodic minor when you're writing a melody. Not by any means. You can use whichever scale you want. What we're explaining with the melodic minor scale here is what composers tend to do. 
what they tend to do is in these runs, when they're going up, they raise the six and seven. And when they're going down, they use them as natural.